Tensions are high between Catalan and Spanish authorities over the former's referendum on independence, which is scheduled for October 1st, 2017. As Catalan residents prepare to vote on whether they want to remain part of Spain, officials in Madrid insist that the mandate is illegal and are taking measures to prevent and disrupt the electoral process. My name is Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Independence has long been a cherished dream for many in Catalonia. In fact, the region's push for autonomy in the 1930s was one of the reasons behind the Spanish Civil War and the resulting Franco dictatorship. As Spain was ruled by an authoritarian government, many civil liberties were broken and minorities were suppressed. People were forced to assimilate into the mainstream Spanish identity. In Catalonia and Basque state, abuse by the central government was at its worst. Following the death of Franco in 1975, Spain's return to democracy was enshrined in the new constitution and the authority of Madrid was decentralized. The parliament and the autonomy of Catalonia re-emerged and Spain embarked on a path of reconciliation. Today, the events of the past almost seem like ancient history. Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia, has flourished since the restoration of democracy. It is one of the most celebrated cities in Europe. As for the autonomous state of Catalonia, it is one of the wealthiest regions of entire Spain. Catalonia has its own police force and exercises control over its healthcare, welfare, and education. There are also many provisions in place to protect the Catalan identity. With a population of roughly 7.5 million people, Catalonia accounts for 15% of the Spanish population, but accounts for nearly 20% of the total GDP. The disproportionate tax input has been one of the primary arguments in favor of independence which emerged in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. Many Catalans believe that their economic prosperity would translate into a viable sovereign state. This has culminated in the latest popular vote on independence. The government in Madrid, however, disagrees. Prime Minister Rajoy of the People's Party considers the Catalan referendum to be illegal and has thus far dealt with the situation by applying legal and economic pressure on the regional authorities. As such, nearly every referendum-related decision by the Catalan government was taken to the Constitutional Court where they have been dismissed as unlawful acts. Since holding the referendum is in violation of the Constitution, the Spanish judiciary system is currently investigating if any crimes have been committed during the setup of the upcoming vote. In this framework, some Catalan officials have been summoned to testify before provincial prosecutors. The situation peaked in mid-September when Spanish law enforcement agencies raided Catalan government offices in search of documents that were linked to the referendum. At least 14 civil servants were detained because of their links to the organization of the vote. Following the crackdown, protests erupted in Barcelona and other cities. Spanish security forces also confiscated large quantities of referendum materials such as posters, envelopes, ballots, etc. Moreover, authorities in Madrid have also blocked several websites that were connected to the popular vote. Obviously, the Spanish government is determined to undermine the referendum, since an independent Catalonia would threaten the existence of Spain and trigger secessionist movements in Basque, Andalusia, Asturias to demand referendums of their own. Yet as significant as the events seem, it is not the first time that a vote on independence is held in Catalonia. In 2013, the Parliament of Catalonia declared that the region had all the merits of an independent state. Following the admission, a year later, a non-binding referendum was held. Although at least 80% of the voters expressed support for independence, the overall turnout was low and ranged between 37 to 41%. 
Nevertheless, secessionist sentiment greatly influenced the 2015 regional elections in Catalonia. Political factions promised a new referendum on independence and as secessionist forces prevailed, a combined pro-independence majority in the Catalan parliament scheduled a new referendum for October 2017. And this basically brings us to the situation of today. But just as the previous referendum, voter turnout, which strengthens the legitimacy and led to the failure of the previous referendums, is paramount in the struggle between Catalan and Spanish authorities. If Madrid can reduce the voter turnout to about 1 million of the 5.4 million eligible Catalan voters, the central government will hurt the credibility of the mandate. Meanwhile, the regional Catalan authority needs to do the opposite and attain a higher participation turnout than in the 2014 vote. Yet, as determined as the Catalan independence movement is, its supporters are divided into several camps. Some members of the ruling Catalan government believe that the referendum should comply within the Spanish constitution, while others argue for a unilateral declaration of independence. The unilateral option is shared by regional political parties who are part of the independence movement as well, such as the Republican left and the Popular Unity candidacy. In fact, the latter promise to respond with widespread civil disobedience if the central government blockades polling stations. However, there are also influential voices, such as the mayor of Barcelona, Ada Calau, who supports the referendum but rejects a unilateral declaration of independence. In any case, since members of the independence campaign are not on the same wavelength, Catalan officials will have to be cautious in the aftermath of the referendum. The movement must maintain a coherent position or risk breaking apart, which could result in the resignation of the regional government and calls for early elections. Yet, if the Catalan government decided to remain in power and negotiate a compromise with Madrid, it could also lead to friction within the Catalans. Radical factions within the independence movement would reject to compromise and instead call for unilateral secession regardless. In the aftermath of the referendum, Prime Minister Rajoy could exploit the fragile structure of the Catalan movement and discredit the coalition. However, up until now, Rajoy has used a wide range of actions as countermeasures to the referendum preparations. For instance, since secessionist motions are considered to be illegal by the Spanish constitution, civil servants who violate the law could be penalized with hefty fines, banned from holding office, and even taken into custody. Another tactic to dissuade the referendum is by means of international isolation. Officials in Brussels in support of Rajoy have stated that an independent Catalonia would not systematically become a member of the Union and that the region's status is strictly an internal matter of Spain. Since most of the Catalan exports go to the members of the EU, international isolation puts Catalonia in an economically inadmissible position. Furthermore, at the present, Rajoy enjoys a coalition majority in the Senate and, according to the constitution, has the legal means to suspend the autonomy of Catalonia, which would require the Madrid government to take control of the Catalan administration. This measure is quite extreme and is bound to backfire and strengthen secessionist calls across the region. Furthermore, suspending Catalan autonomy would also require the use of force, which would create a highly unpredictable environment. Hence, considering the destructive outcome, suspension of autonomy remains Rajoy's last resort. Even though most of the large political parties in Spain reject an independent Catalonia, there are those who are willing to reach a feasible resolution. For instance, the Socialist Party and the Citizens Party although they both oppose the Catalan referendum, have also expressed willingness 
to reform the constitution that would see a federal system in Spain. The proposal of a federal government is also favored in the polls, according to a survey by Metroscopia, which was conducted in May 2017, at least 42% of Catalans were in favor of independence, while 49% was against it. However, support for independence dropped to 39% if leaving Spain also meant leaving the European Union and pro-independence attitudes dropped further down to 29% if Catalonia was given additional autonomous power like full fiscal control. Now, surveys and polls always contain margins of errors. However, these numbers do give an indication of the overall needs of the people. But more to the point, the fact that most Catalans will want to remain part of Spain under different legal terms shows that the federal system of governments backed by proportionate taxing is worth pursuing. At the present, Catalan officials are determined to proceed with the referendum. Meanwhile, Madrid says it won't allow it. All things considered, the day of the vote will likely be met with confusion, sporadic protests and violence in the streets of Barcelona. Yet, by forcefully disrupting the voting process in Catalonia, Madrid cannot hope to reverse the secessionist sentiment in the region. In the short term, the Prime Minister will seek to exploit the division within the Catalan movement and use economic and legal means to reach a compromise on the issue. Considering Spanish politics, process towards a settlement is bound to be slow, but in the short term, Rajoy's measures will be enough to keep Catalonia within Spain. However, this will not resolve the Catalan issue, and secessionist sentiment will continue to play an important role in the politics of Spain. This was a Caspian Report by me, Shirvan. Special thanks to our contributors on Patreon who give us the resources to maintain this channel. If you're interested in more information, visit patreon.com slash Caspian Report. In any case, thank you for your time and Saul.